Hello everyone, Mark Anson Audio here. Today we're going to be learning about complex time signatures, specifically 1916 and 1516. And this is an extension of a video which I was inspired by, which is pictured over here. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is using a MIDI editor in, in your DAW. So I happen to be using Reaper, but whatever DAW you're using is fine. And we're going to use that to help us understand what's happening in complex time signatures. So here I have a really boring 4-4 drum beat. I'm going to double click on it so we can see the MIDI notes. Okay, very dull, but we can learn from this. Okay, so what we have here are uh, basically our 4-4 four, four time signature has been divided into 16th notes. Uh, so we can see these grid lines here represent 16th notes as denoted by my grid down here. Uh, so the eagle eye amongst you will notice that these hi-hats are technically speaking being played on the 8th notes because if they were being played on 16th notes, there would actually be twice as many of them. So I can do that just now. Okay, um, so if we actually go down our grid mode here and put this down to quarter notes, we can actually see what four quarter notes way looks like. So when we're talking about four four time signature, we're talking about four quarter notes uh, and one, two, three, four, there they are. Okay, so we want to talk about more complex things. We want to talk about 1916 time signature. So 16 is the important number there. So I'm going to set my grid to 19 because we need 19 16th notes. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our uh, time signature for the whole session. I'm going to change it to 19 over 16 and hit okay. Right, so the first thing you'll probably notice is that now uh, my drum region over here does not actually extend all the way to the edge of the, the bar because this is the beginning of bar number two over there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend uh, this section out a little bit. I'm going to glue these regions together so I now have a nice big region to work with. And we'll go back into our MIDI editor. And here we are, one, two, three. These are our three notes we've added because we've gone from 4-4, four, four, which is essentially 16-16, 16, 16, and we've gone to 19-16, which means we have three extra 16th notes. And here they are, one, two, three. Okay, so when we're learning to actually, as a musician, try and play and understand in these complex time signatures, it helps to build our drum beat in a way which basically acts as a motif to remind us uh, so that our whole mindset goes with the drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one, two, three notes. I don't know why the velocity in those has changed. I'm just going to pump those up and maybe put a kick to start there as well. So listen to the, the whole whole thing now. So when we're kind of listening for the repeat, what we're listening for is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. So this section here is our three extra 16th notes, which are going at the end. So I put a hi-hat on each of them. Uh, so when we're listening as a musician, we've got a, a, that motif to, to, to jump on and, and our minds to, to grasp. Uh, it's one of the hardest things about learning to, to play in complex time signatures is just getting your head out of 4-4 four, four mode. Uh, and to try, uh, try visualizing things that are more complex and building your drum beat in a way that always accentuates the extra notes or whatever uh, can really help get your you into the mindset of all. Okay, so what we're going to do down here is I've got a little bass uh, patch and I'm going to just add in uh, a very basic bass line. So what I'm going to do is again we're going to stick with that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two three, four, one, two, three, one, sort of thing. So I'm going to start off by doing four very basic boring notes. One, two, three, four. And then because we're learning to, to understand and, uh, and, and play in these time signatures, I'm going to accentuate these three sixteenth notes at the end by doing something with them. I don't know, let's see that. What does that sound like? Kind of pants. Uh, so let's do something weird like that. Now we've got both the bass and the drums accentuating those extra notes, which helps us as a musician just get into the flow and stop thinking about it in terms of maths or anything. 
Okay, right, so that's 1916. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to create uh, a time uh, time signature change here in Reaper. I'm going to insert a tempo time signature marker and I'm going to create a new one and put this one as 1516 this time. So if when we did 1916, we had three extra 16th notes. When we do 1516, we're actually losing one 16th note. So what that ends up being is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Uh, so it's basically the same, except you're you're losing four sixteenth notes. So it's actually pretty easy. Uh, and I realise I've just actually made a mistake there, so I'm just <laughs> gonna put the I've changed the time signature for the whole session. I apologise. Gonna make sure I click there. There we go. Insert a new one. Fifteen sixteen. Okay, so this section here is still nineteen sixteen. Now this section over here is fifteen sixteen. Okay, so I'm going to insert my drums and quickly build up my drum beats. My hi hats. So you can hear it with the, the beat is the way it is, it's hard to, to hear, but again, if we build the drum beat in a way that helps us motif that. So let's get rid of the snare here, and I'm gonna put a kick, and I'm put basically triple hi-hats here. Two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my bass line across the way. But of course it's too long because it's in 1916. But to get it to 1516, all we need to do is get rid of four sixteenth notes or one quarter note. So I'm going to double click on this, this quarter note here, gone. I'm going to drag these ones in here. And now you can see the final note here on my, my MIDI. Uh, hits right to the edge of the bar, so I can just delete that section there. And oops. one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Cool. Now we can listen to that whole whole passage where we're switching from 1916 to 1516. Okay, and again, since we're musicians and we're trying to get into the flow of it, I'm going to change these last three notes over here. Uh, let's see, pull it down here, so that we always have something to keep us on track should we ever lose rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one. Simple as that. Uh, if you're in Reaper and you then want to copy the, and paste this time signature changes, you can click and drag these sections down here, um, which you can see by going to Show Master Track. It appears on the Master Track. You can right click, uh, right click, drag on these blobs, and you can copy and paste those to your heart's delight. And then you can copy and paste your regions across as well, and everything should sync up to bar markers. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I say this is all based uh, on the after I watched this other video uh, a while ago, uh, but I thought it's a good way to visualize it when you've got MIDI in front of you, you can see the grids. Uh, so I hope this encourages you to experiment more with cool time signatures and hopefully you'll write something cool. And if you do, give it a shout. Anyway, my name's been Mark Anson Audio. Please like, rate, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Adios.